Hello everyone. Today, this is my 14th lecture and uh, we shall discuss a new topic, Continuous Charge Distribution and Electric Flux. What is Continuous Charge Distribution? Because we know that the Coulomb force only depends upon the point charges or Coulomb force is only valid for the point charges. But have the, if the body is macroscopic body, then we have to consider the continuous charge distribution. And for the first case, we shall consider its continuous charge distribution. And in this continuous charge distribution, the first is linear charge distribution. In linear charge distribution, we consider an infinitely long wire of infinite length and in which we consider a length of wire. And when we give the charge and uh, the Q amount of charge is distributed to L length of this wire. So this charge is uniformly distributed along its all length L. And now we consider a point P at distance R and where we consider a pointed charge Q0. And we shall calculate the Coulomb force at this point due to this line charge. This is the linear charge distribution. If the charge is uniformly charge distributed or continuously charge distribution, then the charge per unit length, charge per unit length is called linear charge density and this linear charge density is denoted by lambda and lambda is equal to Q by L and if the charge is uniformly distributed then each part of or each equal part of the wire contains the equal amount of charge we consider here a dl length element or a length element of length dl length element means we can consider it as a point charge and corresponding charge is a dq so this is the infinite decimal small length element and it contains dq charge if the charge is uniformly distributed then lambda is equal to q by l and it is also equal to dq by dl. The unit of uniform linear charge density is Coulomb per meter and dimensional <coughs> equation is the value of charge is A1 T1 and length is L1. So dimensional equation M0 L minus 1 T1 A1. This is linear charge density and lambda is equal to dq upon dl. Here dq can be considered, means this length element can be considered as a pointed charge. So dq will be is equal to lambda into dl. Since the Coulomb force depends upon only pointed charge and or it is valid for the pointed charge, so the Coulomb force between this length element dl or corresponding charge dq and q0 will be is equal to k q0 dq upon r square if we put the value of dq is lambda into dl so value of df will be is equal to k q0 lambda dl upon r square. This is the Coulomb force due to this length element 
and if we want to consider the whole wire f is equal to integral k q0 lambda dl upon r square or uh, this is the coulomb force due to this wire or infinite wire k q0 upon r square is a can constant quantity can be taken as out and lambda into dl will be the length element and in this case if the wire is a flow is in the form of closed loop whether it is in rectangular shape or square shape or triangular shape or any closed circular shape then f can be expressed for closed loop for closed loop f is equal to integral and we consider here a small circle so this is the line integral for closed loop this is the line integral can be expressed just like as l and it is k q0 lambda dl upon r square again k q0 upon r square can be taken out lambda into dl so this is the linear charge distribution or uniform charge distribution again i am explaining explaining linear charge per unit length is called linear charge density it is denoted by lambda lambda is equal to q by l its unit is coulomb per meter damage equation m0 l minus 1 t1 a1 and if the charge is uniformly distributed then it is also valid for lambda is equal to dq upon dl then value of dq will be lambda into dl and then we can calculate the coulomb force kq0 dq upon r square the value of dq dq can be put from this lambda into dl and then for whole wire it is in the form of integration and if it is in the form of closed loop then it is expressed as follows so this is for the linear charged distribution now we shall discuss about the second part that is surface charge distribution in surface charge distribution the second part of this continuous charge distribution is surface charge distribution for surface charge distribution we consider a surface area this is a finite sheet and we consider it's a part of area a corresponding charge q and we consider a point p at distance r and for that we consider an area element if we divide a wire into small parts we obtain a like elements but if we divide a surface area just like paper sheet or etc then we consider a small area and it is called small area element its corresponding area is da and corresponding charge is dq and the minimum distance r the area element can be considered as a pointer charge for which the coulomb force or coulomb's law of electrostatic is valid again surface charge density the charge per unit area charge per unit area is called surface charge density and it is denoted by sigma and sigma is equal to q by a and if the charge is uniformly distributed then it is also valid for area element and sigma is equal to dq upon da so dq will be is equal to sigma into da the unit of 
surface charge density will be is equal to the unit of charge is pulled on and the unit of area will be meter square so its unit is coulomb per meter square dimensional equation a1 t1 upon l2 so m0 l minus 2 t1 a1 or will be the dimensional equation of surface charge density and have the value of dq in the form of surface charge density will be sigma into dA. Now again we consider here the dq is a pointed charge and here we consider a charge q0 so coulomb force between q0 and dq and it will be is equal to df is equal to kq0 dq upon r square here it is q0 is a pointed charge and q dq can be considered also a pointed charge and we put the value of dq kq0 sigma da upon r for all surface area A. So F is equal to integral KQ0 sigma dA upon R square. And KQ0 upon R square can be taken out and the value is sigma into dA. This is called surface integral. And for closed surface area means in the shape of cube, cuboid, cylinder, sphere, then the value of F can be expressed just like that for closed surface K Q0 sigma dA upon R square. This is area integral or surface integral kq0 upon r square can be taken out and it is sigma into d this is for closed surface area means the surface area in the form of cube cuboid cylinder or sphere so this is called the surface charge distribution and this is charge per unit area is called surface charge density sigma is the symbol of surface charge density q by a its unit is coulomb per meter square dimensional equation m0 l minus 2 t1 a1 and if the charge distribution is uniform then it is also equal to sigma is equal to dq upon da the value of dq can be put sigma into da Coulomb force between Q0 and DQ we can put and the value is okay, just as follows. Now we shall start the volume charge distribution. The third part of continuous charge distribution is the volume charge distribution. And this is the third part of continuous charge distribution. C like is nothing but volume charge distribution. In volume charge distribution, a solid body is considered just like that. This body has length L, bed B, and thickness T. and the volume of the body is V and the charge given to the body is Q. And we consider it's a small part and that part will be in the shape of a volume particle. Uh, this is called volume element. The corresponding volume is dV and corresponding charge is dQ and this is 
too small and it can be considered as a point actually. At high distance, we consider a point P and the corresponding charge is Q0. Charge per unit volume, per unit volume is called volume charge density. And it is denoted by rho, and rho is equal to the charge per unit volume Q by B. Unit is coulomb, the unit of charge and unit of volume will be equal to Q. Dimensional equation, the dimensional equation of charge is A1T1 upon L3. So M0, L minus 3, T1, A1. This is the volume charge density and if the charge distribution is uniform then it is also equal to dq upon d and dq is equal to rho into d this can be considered as a pointer charge this is already a point charge so Coulomb force between these two point charges, Coulomb force for point charges Q0 and DQ. DF is equal to K Q0 DQ upon R square. Again, we shall put the value of dq, kq0, rho dv upon r square. And for Coulomb force, due to charge to volume body, volume body F is equal to volume integral KQ0 DQ upon R square. This is called volume integration or KQ0 upon R square can be taken out. So integral rho into dv the value of dq rho into dv and this is called volume integral so for the first case we consider a line integral and for a closed loop we put a circle on the integration sign then in second case surface charge density we consider a volume integral sorry uh, surface integral and then for the third case and this case never contains for the close because solid body cannot be closed only a wire can be formed in the in the form of loop or a surface area can have the shafts just like a cylinder or cube or cuboid just like that bodies so this is called the charge distribution and there are three types of charge distribution are there